The Transformers the movie, it introduced a lot of new characters and it took a lot of old ones away. Good and, for you. <laughs> and the Hasbro, they, with their like incessant need to sell new toys and sell them like very, like in very high quantities, they, how did that limit what you could do with developing these new characters in the story of the movie? I was given no limitation on the creation of characters. None. They wanted me to create new characters, and I did. And they made them toys. In the first draft, pardon me, I forget who the characters were, but they didn't put them in the movie. They didn't want them, but they made them toys anyway, and they were successful. At this moment, I don't remember all of them, I think Springer was one. Anyway, there's so many characters in any Transformer, in any G.I. Joe movie, in any of those sagas, so many characters. How many characters are in Lord of the Rings? How many characters were in, uh, uh, wh where, where were the dragons in Game of Thrones? How many? If you just had them run past you, run past the camera, hey, this is, hey, this is, hey, this is, hey, this is, hey, it will take four days, and then who do you remember? The one that caught fire. Who, what was the name? I have no idea. So they were thrilled to get new characters, but what really thrilled them was the idea that I instituted with G.I. Joe, which is I broke G.I. Joe and the Cobra into teams. So there are three of them. There are four on a mission. There are two so you get to know them. That's what endears an audience to any entertainment. You feel you know who that is. And you might say, I really identify with that. I really do. And that helps immensely. That's why the toys sold. Now, one of the reasons I knew that, and I said I will not do a 22-minute pilot episode, because that'll just be a parade of non-entities. I said, I want to do a five-parter. So there'll be time to introduce the characters as individuals, because that will marry the kids and the watchers to these characters. They'll want to buy that toy. They want to buy this one. I want to buy Roadblock. Why? I got to know him. I like what he stands for. I like what he does. Sergeant Slaughter, a wrestler, and not a great one. But they see him, they like him, they like the voice. So I want to buy him. So they were thrilled any time I could come up with one, some kids would say, I want to buy. But here's how I knew that. When I was in architectural school, because I was an architect, a civil engineer for 11 years before I had the guts to follow my bliss and become a writer. And I was asked by the provost of the university, Elliot Dunlap Smith, who had been provost at Yale and was lured away to Carnegie Tech, I took a class with him and he called me at home. He said, I think you're the guy we're looking for. He said, a toy manufacturer who is nameless wants to do a study, psychological study, of what makes children buy and like certain toys and want to play certain games. So what we're going to do is we brought in the kids, we'll bring them in, and there'll be a one-way mirror, and we will observe, and we will decide on that basis what it is that draws kids to toys and to games. So it began with four people, two girls, two boys. Each one would get a private room with a kid and the toy or the game, and they would watch as I explained the game, and then we played it, or I demonstrated the toy, and they'd laugh like hell because I'd always get it wrong. You know, if it was a doll, I'd look in its ass, always. And they'd say, no, the face is there. So anyway, after the first two weeks, they said, you're the only one that's going to do it from now on. I said, why? They said, the, you relate to the kids and they relate back. And they're not afraid to tell you how they really feel. Because most kids, if an adult says, how do you like it? You're gonna say, oh, I like it. You're not gonna say, it sucks, because you wanna please the adult. So I did it then for another three weeks. 
And then I was brought in the Department of Psychology, the Department, the School of Business Management, which was the first business school to give a degree, and people from the Department of Psychology and the Department of Business Psychology were there with a report. And I said, what did you find out? They said, we found out that if kid li kids like the person, showing them the toy or the game, they will want to like it. I said, how does that help you? They said, we have to be careful about under what circumstances we reveal the toys or the games to the kids. So they have the sense of someone they like liking it. I said, OK. I don't think you can do that every time. They said, neither do we. But what we learned is there are certain qualities that make a toy or a game likable. And I said, what did you find out? They said, the more iconographic the game or the toy was, the more certain it would sell. And the kids need time to refresh their memory. So I'd sometimes be told to show the same toy again. They need time to digest the fact, I like this. I didn't like that. That's it. They need time to determine they're liking it. And they need a sense of connectivity that comes from iconography. So that's why I said, I'm not going to do a 22-minute pilot. And that's why I got the assignment. Because Hasbro didn't believe people who wrote animation could write well. They thought they were all bad. Anyway, they interviewed writers of network television. I was one of 107. They picked me because of what I said about that. I won't do it in one 22-minute episode. There you go. Thank you. Thank you.